My name is Kim Prasnow. I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Toronto. My area is building science and my research areas include looking at building performance, building envelopes, and low energy buildings. My, my current research areas, um, really it's in, it, what my students are interested in. And one of the projects that, that, uh, that we've been working on for the last two years is called the Gemini Project, which is on Sussex Avenue. And it's an 1879 uh, solid masonry home. And uh, what we're doing is turning it into a low energy building, but doing it in a clever way. And uh, it's using something called nested thermal envelopes. I'm also That's involved wonderful. in construction, so from the university side, from the essentially the designer side, um, myself and Professor Kim Presnell and Russell Richmond from Ryerson University, um, they're sort of the co-founders of this neat concept called the Gemini Nested Thermal Envelope Design that we're implementing in this house while we're retrofitting it. This house was built in the Second Empire style, um, and characteristic of that style, um, there's always sort of a turret, kind of like a large chimney on the front of the house. So what we're actually doing is we're going to be cutting the floor here. So it's, it's going to be open from the first floor all the way to the turret. We will be installing a skylight here, but the really neat thing is during the summer, um, instead of using air conditioning, we're going to be opening, this space is going to be open. The occupants are going to have a remote controlled skylight where they can open and have sort of air exhaust and almost act like a um, vented chimney. So another research project that we're working on is related to the energy performance of uh, high-rise multi-unit residential buildings and basically apartment buildings here in Toronto. And the wonderful thing about Toronto is it's a wonderful living lab. We have lots of high-rise buildings um, and most of our buildings were built in the 60s, 70s and 80s um, but we're still continuing to build them today and we're monitoring them to find out how much energy they're actually using and then we're looking for ways to improve their energy performance. Another project that we're working on uh, is related to thermal mass and concrete in buildings. And what we're looking at is trying to develop a tool to make it easier for designers to account for the energy benefits of incorporating thermal mass in buildings. And the short story is that uh, we can actually delay uh, the, and it's, it's called shifting the peak, delay our, our, our cooling demand uh, with thermal mass. And we can also reduce the amount of cooling that's required. So what, what makes a building more sustainable? I think that's the best way to phrase it. Ultimately, I, there's a big debate out there. People look at some of the building rating systems and try to decide what makes a building more sustainable. But in fact, if you look at a building and over its life cycle, whether it's 30 years, 40 years, or 80 years, the most important single factor that's going to determine how sustainable that building is, is its energy performance. Operational energy is 80% of a building's impact on the environment. Embodied energy, these other things are important, but that component is the biggest. And what the occupants see, what the consumers see, they see comfort and they see better air quality when we build lower energy. They also see savings in their pocketbook. And that saving that in the future will be even greater as energy prices rise. And they're going to rise faster than inflation and we know that. But ultimately more sustainable to me means low energy. Building at low energy, low impact. And we're not at zero energy, we still need some, we're still in a cold climate, we still need some heat, we may still need some cooling energy, but if we can reduce those demands then we're building more and designing more responsible buildings. The building industry is changing, we have many more building products and new products, innovative products and they're applied in innovative ways and oftentimes when that happens we get some great successes but we also get failures but we learn from those failures. So I, the, the area of building science is often, it's not really about trial and error, but in our research what we're trying to do is take these new products, apply them in new ways, and test them in a laboratory, test them in field tests to show that they work. Um, the example of the Gemini project that I was talking about, those are existing materials applied in a new way, creating these nested thermal envelopes. And, and then if I look at the uh, multi-unit residential building research that we're doing and, and looking at ways of retrofitting, we're taking existing materials, but we're applying them in an innovative way. Um, we're looking at enclosing environment balconies and using them as a heat recovery zone. And as far as we know, no one else has actually done that. So with the compressor unit within that enclosed space, what that unit is doing is pumping heat from a much warmer space rather than the outside because the apartment is constantly losing heat into that balcony space. So there we improve the efficiency of the air source heat pump. 
I mean, ultimately, I mean, it starts with I benefit and the students benefit, the, the students that work on the research because they learn to become better researchers. But they also, I'd like to think the research projects that we're working on is something that's of a larger benefit. It's for the benefit of the public. Because ultimately, it's about low energy, saving energy, which is ultimately carbon, which is better for us, it's better for cost, it's better for um, the occupants of the buildings because they're more comfortable. But ultimately, it's better for the planet because we're using Less energy it means less CO2 in the atmosphere. So, and then I, I guess the last one, and, and certainly not the least, is the, the students that we end up teaching here. Not the ones just doing the research, but the class, because we can bring it into the class. I went to University of Toronto for my undergraduate degree in civil engineering. And when I graduated, I was curious about other things other than engineering. And um, so I went off to law school and became a lawyer. And although I practiced for a very brief period of time, um, the short story is I found what I truly loved was engineering and teaching engineering. And I found myself in law school actually teaching uh, law students about uh, engineering. And that was sort of the trick to, well, maybe I should go back and do my master's. So I did my master's and my PhD. And the whole motivation at that time really for me was teaching. I truly loved teaching and passing on what I knew and I also loved research because it was about developing new things. And the wonderful thing about universities is I can bring those new things into the classroom. Okay, well, come back anytime. See you later.